I think more, probably more determined than ever at the moment, um, what with just releasing our album Automatic and uh, yeah, trying to promote it to as many people as possible. Um, mm. We spent yeah. so long uh, writing Automatic and making sure that we were completely happy with it and we took um, kind of every measure to make sure the tracks were perfect because we're so determined that it's a, a success but it's also an honest representation of kind of who we are who and we the music we want band, to make. Yeah. Yeah, so. We are crazy. So very, determined, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>I think on the whole, the little things we've kind of tried to learn uh, not to let them bother us as much as possible and look at the bigger picture of yeah. things. Especially when it came to the, um, the songwriting, uh, we always used to get hung up on very kind of small details which didn't contribute to the actual feel of the song and the kind of emotional connection that that song makes to the listener. Um, and with this album particularly, we started to realise that it's that emotional connection between the listener and the songs which is the most important thing by a long way. Um, so we started to really kind of try and hone in on that and forget about all the kind of intricacies of, oh, this drum fill needs to be meticulously in time. It's all yeah. about how does that make the listener feel. And I think the, uh, the record as a whole is quite um, positive and quite, it's about kind of living in the moment and taking all the opportunities you can. So kind of forgetting about the things that don't really matter and just enjoying your time on, the, in this, on this earth or whatever. Um, yeah, we went to Spain. We'd uh, basically been uh, getting cabin fever in the UK. We were in Matt and Rob's front room for months on end trying to write songs. And we got to the point where we were hitting a brick wall with a bunch of songs. And it's really quite dispiriting when you're in that situation because when you're trying to do something creative and, and you just can't, enjoy the situation that you're in because you've been in it for so long you need a change of scenery so we uh, we up sticks and uh, went to Spain and just tried to kind of forget everything that had come before and thought okay blank canvas we're out in Spain let's just get inspired enjoy the sunshine write a song that's really fun and upbeat um, and we kind of came back with a real, really like new lease of life after yeah. that as well I think we needed a break and needed to break the cycle of just going to their house just to write big time um, super love really kind of Gave the album writing process a real second wind. So yeah. I'd recommend going to Spain and having a couple of sangrias, <laughs> trying to write a song or two. Um, it's just kind of about, I guess, personal vices mm. um, and, you know, indulging in something that perhaps you know is wrong, but it's, it's so good that you can't get enough of it, whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, it might be a person, it might it be might a be thing. It might be a person, it yeah. might be, you know, w whatever, a food. <laughs> it might <laughs> be alcohol, if that's your thing. Um, I think we're all quite... Uh, this is really boring, really lame. <laughs> but we all try to exercise now in a way that we'd go on tour before and we would eat crap every day. You're in service stations eating Burger King and, and whatever's easy to get your hands on. Um, and we've all consciously thought, okay, we really need to stop doing that. So now we all try and exercise on the road and we all try and make sure that we eat properly because you, uh, you realise that your body is a, a temple and you need mm. to take care of it. <laughs> that whole song is kind of about the kind of daunting power of social networks and how now with things like Instagram and Twitter and, and Facebook, you're always watching people. You're, you whether it's living a band your life by or them, it's a person, you? you're always experiencing every little thing they're doing. You know, whether they've gone to the shops, or they've bought a loaf of bread, or they've bought new shoes. Um, and it's just, I guess, a, a commentary on how powerful that, that medium has become, but how kind of dangerous it is, and also how there's actually a, a real world out there beyond looking what other people are doing through the screen on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was at school with Alex, yeah, it was a very sad story. We do have a lot of the same friends. Um, Rob, Matt and I went to school together um, since we were like very young boys, 
So our friendship group from school is almost um, exclusively the same group of guys and we're all very close still. Um, and then since we started the band uh, and we've known Tom, um, all the bands and all, all the people in the industry that we know and are friends with are all in the same, same circle. So we share a whole ton of friends as well. Um, but I think yeah. obviously we have our kind of own outlets outside yeah, of that Yeah, we've all well, got so our own kind yeah, of little, little groups outside. But yeah. <laughs>actually told me he was going to do it he was thinking oh what do you think about writing this song um about alex and uh it just seemed like a very appropriate uh kind of emotive powerful piece of music um and it's it's a story i mean a lot of people have, have lost someone or need to draw inspiration and need to feel um you know like there's there's a point in going forward and going on with whatever they might be doing in their lives despite something terrible that might have happened um, and I just thought it was a really, really great message to uh, to put out there. And, and writing a song like that is also very um, therapeutic for the artist. You know, it's, it's great for Bobby to be able to put those uh, thoughts and feelings down on the page and have other people understand, you know, a big part of his life that he's gone through. That's difficult. <laughs> I, I think... Probably one of them might be kind of positive mental attitude. Yeah, I think, I think that plays a huge, a huge part in uh, curing whatever it might be. Uh, and if you, if you can't get your head to do it, then you're not going to get your body to do whatever you're doing or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But I think that, that kind of lyric is mainly about kind of, again, taking chances that you wouldn't necessarily either take, uh, wouldn't usually take or you might question taking. Um, so that's kind of, if it's a miracle cure and you had it, of course you're going to take it, so why don't you take other chances as well? So. Wow. Wow. I think Rob would, because Rob's, to, I think Rob would try anything something. once. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, would have, I would have been intrigued to go on something like Blind Date when that was going on. Back in the day. In I the can't day. think what the no, big dating yeah. shows are currently now. And take me out. Take me out, yeah. Would be the one, one of them. Take me out is quite an interesting one. Um, yeah, probably. I, I think I'd have to invent some really kind of crazy, interesting thing in order to go on there. Yeah, I think I'd, you'd have to really think about it. I can, I can moonwalk on my hands or something like that, and then I don't have like a mad kind of that, but... visual TV no, worthy talent. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe when I figure out that, then I'd be far more disposed to doing it. Yeah. That was actually really interesting to watch, though. I quite enjoyed that. Oh, I never saw So that. everyone went into a restaurant, and they'd never met this person. They had had a meal, and they kind of filmed it covertly. Oh, right. Well, they knew they were being filmed, but, you know, you just see snippets of it. And that sounds interesting. Some of the people that matched together were just... Well, I don't know. I that sounds far that more work, interesting than Take Me Out. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It was, yeah, psychologically very interesting. Mm. So. I, th I mean, I think when we actually posted that, we were thinking, look, we wanted to, to alert people who have followed us in the past to the fact that we've got this new album coming yeah. out. We wanted to almost shock them and we say, We thought we'd look, take a dramatic standpoint yeah. on the social and media. We, Priorities is dead. We by no means <laughs> think that that album is, is nothing to do with us anymore or anything like that. We still really love playing the songs live and all that kind of thing. Mm. But we, this is the next chapter, and we wanted to tell people that that's what we're doing. We felt it was quite symbolic when we made the video. You know, we thought it's a really good kind of visual thing, us kind of dancing around in the ashes of what got us to where we are yeah. at the moment. Um, and we're certainly not um, abandoning where we came from no. in any way. We're and that, just opening the next chapter and celebrating the last one. <laughs> and that backdrop went, went with us everywhere as well. So it's actually really... It's so nice because if, if we hadn't cool. done that, it would just be sitting in, in a our garage. garage and get forgotten. Yeah. This way we can actually give it back to people where it'll mean something to them. It'll be something sentimental. Like if they came to a show, which most of them almost certainly They'd did. They'd have seen it up on the, the stage. And something everyone can take yeah. and, and think, wow, cool. I was a part of that, that part of this band's career. And at one point, we'll get everyone back together, piece them all together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Sounds like a movie. That's yeah. going to be the we'll documentary. See. <laughs> I don't know. It's quite a nice thing to do, I think. Um, yeah. And the backdrop, it's such a kind of 
easy item to do that with, you know, it's something that's so easy to, to cut up and give to people and it, it still holds that kind of significance in such a kind of small scrap of material. I think it's a really nice thing to do. Yeah. I'm sure we do it. And as each backdrop is generally themed with the album and that kind of thing, like the current one is based on the current artwork for Automatic. Mm. It's kind of nice. The current to... one's super vibrant and super colourful, so when we do cut that one up, it's going to be far easier to actually see which bit of it you've got. Yeah, so I think there's a great big that. blue pool in the middle. Oh yeah, people pool. get a lot. So of the there'll pool. be a lot of the the blue. But people will be like, I've got a bit of the pool. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. I think they're all a kind of double-edged sword. Yeah. Like you can do so much with all of them. Like you can do so so many amazing things with money. You can do so much, many amazing things with fame if you've got the influence and if you've got you know um, it take if you're a huge megastar celebrity who is so famous that their influence can reach every corner of the world by just something as simple as a tweet or a Facebook message. Mm. That can be incredibly powerful and incredibly good or it can be incredibly destructive. Negative, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if you could generalise and say one of them is more, more powerful than the other. Yeah. But, yeah, I think we'd have to sit horribly on the fence on that one and say all three can be good or bad. <laughs> Um, from a personal point of view, uh, I think Taylor Swift is very uh, inspirational with the stand that she took on Apple Music recently. Um, and that was uh, a really kind of great example about how she has got to the, the top of the tree and how she can, even though it wouldn't make any difference to her whether you know Apple offered this three month free trial without paying the artist, she stood up and actually told the world, you probably don't think about it in those mm. terms, that, look, you're, you're not thinking about the, the so smaller the producers, little the little guy, the small bands, the people who rely on, on these royalties or, or these fees, you know, to make sure they've got a living. Um, and it was pretty amazing that someone could stand up to a company as big as Apple and yeah. have Apple take notice um, and actually then change, change their actions according to what she'd said. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Fair play, Taylor. Fly. That would be awesome. That would be quite cool. I'm going to say world peace to make yours sound really trivial. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But I'd love to fly as well. Just for Actually, record. I want to teleport. That would be easier. I don't know. I think you'd miss out on seeing a lot of All cool right, stuff. Fly. I'm sticking with fly. <laughs> but really fast. <laughs> you sort out the world peace. I'll, I'll be on my way. And we can fly around a peaceful, lovely, <laughs> blissful existence. <laughs>